We are going to stay with Space News and with the story of another group that is headed to infinity and beyond to achieve the very first all-civilian spacewalk. The Polaris Dawn crew is set to embark on a five-day mission launching this summer on SpaceX's Dragon X. Their goal is to fly higher than any Dragon mission to date and reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown. Today, we are getting to meet some of the team. Joining us now to discuss their upcoming mission is entrepreneur Jared Isaacman. He actually commissioned the mission. You are also its commander and you are actually financing a series of these flights, as I understand it. And also joining us is Scott Petit. He is the mission pilot. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having Good us. Good morning. Okay, so I have so many questions for you because I'm fascinated by the fact that, as I understand it, you both have plenty of flight experience. You both have been in all different types of aircraft up in the sky or very experienced in that way. But this is not that. This is actually going to space, right? So first, just how is prep going? It's going really well. I mean, uh, we've been training for almost two years for this mission. Uh, as you mentioned, we have some pretty ambitious objectives. We're going farther into space than the last time humans walked on the moon more than 50 years ago. We're testing out uh, a brand new spacesuit that maybe someday some evolution of it could be used to, uh, for humans walking on the moon or Mars. We've got a communication uh, system we're testing over Starlink lasers, and, and we got a lot of science and research. It takes a long time to get ready, but we're getting close. Scott, how are you feeling about flying? I, I love flying. You know, it's, uh, it's good training that uh, we utilize. Uh, we have fighter jets that uh, allows us to work together, you know, build that trust, um, be in an environment where it's uh, stressful, but it's manageable, mm -hmm. uh, and it prepares us for space. And so it's... You know, we not only fly fighter jets, we've done scuba diving training, we've climbed mountains, we do a lot of simulator training, uh, mm -hmm. nominal procedures, as well as get ready for contingencies. Okay, neither of you seem like you scare easily, but I don't mean to freak you out or anything, but I have interviewed some NASA astronauts, one of whom, her name's Christina Cook, she's fabulous, she was part of the first all-female spacewalk. We talked a lot about what it takes for a spacewalk and the type of training that they did for months and months, not even knowing for sure that they were going to need to do one just to be prepared in case. What is it like prepping for a spacewalk? I know you have, you're doing some interesting things underwater, above water, using these different machines, but I mean, how are you feeling about actually like opening the door and going out there? I think we're super excited. I mean, that has been the largest portion of our training for the last couple of years. I mean, you know, the capability to undertake a spacewalk has been limited to a couple of world superpowers. I mean, the U.S., Russia, and China right. as governments have figured this out. But we all need to understand this. If we're going to have thousands of people in space someday walking on the moon, going to Mars and beyond, like this capability to get outside your vehicle and explore and build and repair, everyone needs to understand. So we've trained a lot for it. We've been underwater, as you mentioned. We've been hanging from the ceiling in these offloaders that replicate microgravity. And uh, I think we're feeling pretty prepared. And concurrent to our training, SpaceX has developed a suit for the very first time that is, uh, it's phenomenal technology and it's going to keep us safe. Yeah, tell me more about the suit because actually that's something else I talked with Christina about is the suits for spacewalks, they're obviously very specific. So what's new here? How are you innovating on it? It is a completely brand new suit. So like the uh, the suits that Christina wore that they have on the International Space Station, like their lineage goes back four decades. They work. No one's built a new suit in a long time because it's super hard because essentially it turns into a mini spacecraft. Uh, when we walk around and wear it, it looks like not a big deal. But when it's pressurized to keep us safe and healthy, it is very rigid. Oh. Um, and you have to have joints all over the place just to be able to move around, to move your fingers. Uh, you need a visor to protect you from the sun. You need multiple paths of, um, of life support, of oxygen to get in to, to keep you alive and maintain you know, thermal regulation in your body. There's a lot that goes into it. It's why it hasn't been done in a while, but we've had a front row seat for the last two years of SpaceX development of it. Mm. And this is a suit, again, that someday people could be wearing on the moon or Mars. It's pretty cool. Scott, how different is piloting this than the other types of aircraft we've piloted? You know, there, there's skill sets that definitely carry over. Uh, that's why we continue to fly fighter jets to this day uh, to prepare us for this mission. Um, but we all bring, uh, you know, uh, skill sets that are important for this mission. Sarah and Anna, our crew members, they're engineers for SpaceX. Um, and, you know, Sarah taught Jared how to be an astronaut. Now she has the opportunity to actually uh, go into space so she, she can bring all those, um, that experience uh, and teach in the future. And uh, Anna, she has a background with uh, NASA as well as SpaceX, and she was the technical advisor for uh, Jared's Inspiration4 mission. I've been very reliant uh, upon them to train for this mission, and I'm just happy to be with this crew. That's so cool. Very cool. We're pretty much out of time, but I do just want to ask, St. Jude's is involved here. Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. So uh, St. Jude was an important part of my last mission, Inspiration4. 
uh, raised over $250 million uh, for their important cause. And I mean, that's what this is about. You know, we want to build an exciting future for tomorrow that we can all be excited about. I mean, it's mm. SpaceX's vision. The world's more interesting when people can journey among the stars. But St. Jude's got an important mission, right? That no child should die in the dawn of life. And we've mm -hmm. got to build towards that important future for tomorrow and try and take care of some of the problems we have here on Earth as well. And they do such incredible work there at St. Jude. Jared Isaacson, Scott Petit, good luck. Thank you for coming by. We'd love to talk to you after. Thanks for being here. Sounds great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.